Uh, one of my uh, happiest memories is when I finished my first term in university and came home for Christmas. And uh, my dad came to collect me from Aberystwyth and I was in my room and I could hear him coming down Pier Street whistling. And when he saw me, he laughed and he twisted my ear and he said, boy, I've missed you so much. It's good to see you. And we got in the car and I fell fast asleep all the way home. And I woke up outside my house in Beaufort and uh, the Christmas lights were on and the Christmas music was playing. A uh, mam was um, making a homemade pie and she'd obviously seen the car pull up and she'd put the kettle on. She came to the door and when she saw me, she cutched me tight and she said, I've missed you. At last, my boy is home. It's a great memory uh, because at home I was greatly loved. And in the book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 11, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is like the Son of Man because he's in his pre-incarnate state, he appears to Daniel and he says, Daniel, in heaven, you are greatly loved. And Daniel was in Babylon. He was an excellent Babylon. He'd been in Babylon since he was 14 years of age. When this takes place, he's now in his 80s. He's been in Babylon for over, over 70 years. And uh, during that time, uh, he's been forgotten. Uh, he's been, uh, people have been out to get him. He's seen visions which have overwhelmed him about what's going to happen to the church. Um, he's been discouraged because uh, people, uh, they've been, have been agreed that they can go back to Jerusalem and build a temple, but very few people have. And those who have, um, their kind of building project has been thwarted. Uh, he's discouraged. He's even been thrown to the lions. And yet, in spite of all of that, even though he's a long way from home and going through all these things, he's told by one like the Son of Man, Daniel, in heaven, you are greatly loved. I don't know what your situation is this morning. Uh, maybe you're a young person. Um, and if you're a young person and you're going to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, then I imagine there's going to be tough times ahead. Uh, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, you might be... Uh, neglected you might be seen as weird people might even be really offended by the things you say um, can I tell you this though in heaven you are greatly loved maybe you're a, a kind of middle-aged person and you're weary in well-doing and you're a bit discouraged and the cares of this life and the stresses of work and family life is all too much for you in heaven you are greatly loved uh, maybe you're an old person and can I tell you, you're needy home and hold on to that. Maybe in lockdown, you're feeling lonely and isolated. You're able to go to church. You feel cut off and uh, maybe a bit forgotten about. Well, can I tell you this? Hold on to this in heaven. You are greatly loved. And even though Daniel uh, wasn't in heaven yet and he was told this, then there were times in his life where he experienced, if you like, heaven on earth. And you know what his secret was? He read his Bible and said his prayers. And when he read his Bible and when he prayed, there were times when uh, one like the Son of Man drew near to him, uh, angels came to him and he experienced heaven on earth. And I don't know why you think you read your Bible and pray. Maybe you think it's because that's what Christians do. But can I encourage you um, to see reading your Bible as uh, times of uh, coming away from this world and breathing in the air of another world. A world where if you're a Christian this morning, you are greatly loved. So like the hymn writer says, beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. And maybe uh, when you read your Bible and when you pray, like Daniel, heaven will meet with you. And you will feel that sense that you are greatly loved. And angels might minister to you. So I encourage you to do these things. Be serious. But the things of God, you know, in my church in London, I preach every week, every month and I'm doing a series on people just like us and it's on biblical characters. And I've done three on Daniel. And, you know, if I'm honest with you, I find it hard to preach on Daniel because Daniel is nothing like me. I can preach on Rahab. Um, I can preach on the Samaritan woman, immoral people, and I can empathize with them and I can preach it from my heart. But with Daniel, it was difficult because Daniel in the Bible is no record of his sins. He's completely different to me. But you know what I realised? That instead of saying, well, I'm not like Daniel, then I resolve to be a Daniel. 
a resolve to be that godly man who is serious about the things of God that heaven loves and that when I read my Bible and pray, heaven draws near to me and gives me little foretastes of the life to come. But let me just finish with this. Maybe you think to yourself, but how do I know? How can I be sure that I'm greatly loved? Well, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, some of the most difficult verses in the whole of Daniel. Um, Daniel is looking forward to Jerusalem and the temple being rebuilt. And in Daniel chapter 9, he's basically told us, and Daniel, that's important, but let me tell you something more important that's going to happen in Jerusalem. And uh, there's lots of numbers, which I can't go into now, but basically in about 490 years time, Daniel, in Jerusalem, four things are going to happen. Uh, transgression, sin is going to be dealt with. You are going to be made righteous with God. Um, you will no longer need to go to Jerusalem to worship God, but you can worship him where you are. And this is going to be God's final thing he's going to say to human beings. And you know what happened in Jerusalem, 490 years from Daniel, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one like the Son of Man, became the Son of Man and died on the cross. And that is how you and I know that we are loved by heaven. Because on that cross, whilst Daniel looked forward to it, we look back to it. Our sins have been dealt with. We've made been made right with God. We no longer need to go to Jerusalem. We can worship God in our homes during lockdown or in church or wherever we are. And this is what all God has to say to us. And let me just imagine this. Well, let you imagine this. Imagine it's AD 1. And uh, a group of astronomers go into uh, the library in Babylon where Daniel's book would have been placed. And maybe there's three of them, maybe there's 12 of them, maybe there's loads of them, I don't know. They go in and they take down this book and they read it and they come to Daniel chapter 9. And they see that, wow, uh, this book says in 490 years time or so, something amazing is going to happen in Jerusalem. A king's going to be born. And they work it out think, actually, that time is now. This king's about to be born now. And they also study the night sky and they see a star, a brilliant star they've never seen before. They think this king is born. And so they get on their camels and they follow this star. They cross the Syrian desert and they eventually come to a little house in Bethlehem. And they tie up their camels and they knock the door and a carpenter answers the door to them and they explain why they're there and the carpenter lets them in. They see a Hebrew maid, little teenage Hebrew girl sitting in the corner and a toddler. And when they see this toddler, they open their travel bags, they take out gold, frankincense and myrrh and they worship this baby. Why? Because the one like the son of man has become the son of man. And they go back to their own country and uh, imagine 30, 40 years later, uh, the gospel comes to them, maybe through Thomas or some of the other disciples who went to the East. And they told you, know that toddler, well, he grew up, he died on a cross. Why? Because in heaven, you are greatly loved. Why are you listening to this this morning? Why aren't you doing anything else but listening to this? You could be doing anything, couldn't you? But you're listening to this. Why? Because in heaven, you are greatly loved.